Okay, so last week we were talking about attachments versus authenticity, and that led us into a really robust conversation that included uh, considerations of what is abuse and, and largely talking about how do we construct and understand our relationships with each other. And it occurs to me that we are at a place where we're beginning to actually move to, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I'm going to try to do this. This is really, really complicated, but we have, we, we are developing sixth order relationships and it may be that I'm biting off more than you can chew, but I want to try this. Okay. <clears throat> so the basic, this is, this becomes a really good example, I think, of a much larger principle and and it's sort of like, um, if you understand mathematics or arithmetic even, two plus two equals four, always, right? Two what? Doesn't matter. Two of one thing and two of the same thing put together become four of the same thing, okay? So there are certain kinds of scientific principles that happen at scale. Any, any scale, it's, this is always going to work. And a part of what we are... <laughs> What we're trying to get our heads around here, what I'm hoping we can get our heads around, is the whole concept of uh, complex, complex systems, complexity. And that complexity and complex systems move through a developmental process that we refer to as the eight orders of being. We typically talk about it, the eight or orders of self, but it's, it, it's the or eight orders of anything. And certain emergent properties like s consciousness and self-organization that can happen in the context of a self-organizing system. And the bottom line here is that when we've been able to construct relationships in which we're aware of the fact that we're different, some of the differences are differences we don't like, we are in conflict with each other, and yet we understand that the purpose of the relationship is not for us to be alike or for us to take care of each other emotionally or in any other way, the purpose of the relationship is to construct a, a context in, a container for us to each work out our own stuff so that we're each growing ever more fully into the person that we are able to be. That's a different purpose for a relationship than most mostly we talk about. In fact, we've talked in the past about, recent past, about how it is that we will, particularly if we've had uh, a childhood that was chaotic, for some reason, we will we will be careful to create attachment to others, and sometimes in ways that deny or diminish our own authenticity. We will choose attachment over authenticity. The question becomes, how do we do both, and how do we hold both together in the context of the relationships that we form with each other? So if you are not familiar with the eight orders of self or the eight orders of being more broadly, then I suggest you follow the link uh, and, and read up on that because otherwise this is just going to make absolutely no sense. All right. <clears throat> but basically what I'm observing that we've, we're talking about doing now and becoming more and more able to do is in the complex adaptive systems of our relationships. Now, um, a system is a way of thinking about the interrelationship between various things. Systems don't exist as, uh, except outside of our, our, our capacity to think of them. Now, a car is a system, but so is traffic is a system. So the car is a, an, a, an, a, an element within this more complex dynamic system, which is traffic, uh, an ant is an organism that basically makes very few choices, but is somewhat random in terms of its operation. And ants, as nearly as we can tell, are not adaptive, but ant hills are. The ant colony is. The individual neurons in my brain, uh, they form, they die, they recreate, we can create new ones. Neurons in the firing, they are not adaptive, but together, all of those billions of neurons in our brains allow us to th think and to create the emergence property, emergent property of consciousness. When any complex adaptive system becomes able to reflect upon itself, that is, it is conscious not just of what's happening around it, uh, uh, around itself, but 
actually looks within itself as humans, we don't really become able to do this until we're like maybe 11 to 13 years old. That is that we become able to think about how it is that we think. And so as adults, as we form relationships, the relationship may in fact become one in which in the relationship, we, we reflect upon the relationship itself. We have a conversation about the relationship we're having. And we make decisions, perhaps, about how it is that we will form the relationship. When people fall in love, that wonderful kind of one plus one equals one symbiosis, uh, the, the energy goes towards, towards attachment. We are two people becoming one person. Now, that's not actually a stable way of being because it presumes that in fact we are one person and we're not. And it presumes that the other is who I expect or want the other to be, which they're not. And so as we discover differences, that challenges the attachment. And sometimes we break up. Or sometimes we have highly conflicted relationships for a long time. Ideally, we can move from that one plus one equals one symbiosis into a one plus one equals two partnership, where together we are committed to creating something like putting the kids through college. And on to a one plus one equals three kind of relationship in which each of us is a fully functioning autonomous individual. We are not in the relationship so that the other takes care of us. We are in the relationship in order to create the relationship because it's the relationship that we need in order to do our own work, in order to discover who we are, in order to work through our own issues. And so together we create a relationship which allows us each to become more and more our best selves. That is, we're transforming, we're moving our consciousness up to a higher order of being, but we're also moving the relationship from a fifth order, conflicted, we're different, oh no, hair on fire, to, oh wait, the purpose of the relationship <coughs> is to create the relationship, the container in which each of us grows. And so we have a perspective that embraces the diversity. It appreciates the diversity. We can say, oh, look, here's another growth opportunity. And as a result, we move, not just individually, but collectively, we move to a sixth order understanding and into non-dual awareness, the beginnings of non-dual awareness, which I hope you understand. And if you don't, let's work on getting you there because it's this marvelous thing that we're doing. And I think it's time that we celebrate it. All right. I'll see you Sunday. <laughs>